In this lecture, let's talk about Java platform threads. Specifically, we will talk about different ways to create the platform threads. And then we will talk about a few important methods from the thread class which we frequently use. Much of what we talk about applies to virtual threads as well, but we will focus on the general capabilities of the threads as it existed before virtual threads were introduced in Java 21. There are many ways to create a Java thread. Let's begin by creating a thread in the simplest possible way. The simplest way to create a thread is to extend the thread class. Here's an example. On the screen, you see a class called simple thread, which extends the thread class, and the method run is overridden. The constructor takes in a thread name and an integer parameter, which is later used as a parameter for sleep in the run method. Now the run method will simply do the following. It prints a start message and then waits for an arbitrary number of seconds. And after that prints an end message. Now, how do we use this simple class to start a new thread? Here it is. You can instantiate the simple thread class and then call the method start. It's as simple as that. If you assume that the main thread called the start method, then at that point, we have two threads running. So in the diagram, you can see the two threads after the start method gets called, the main thread and the thread called simple. Now all of the code within the run method of simple thread is being executed as part of the simple thread and not the main thread. Note by default, the platform threads are non-daemon threads unless you explicitly mark the thread as daemon thread. Now why is this important? If there are any non-daemon threads running, the JVM will not shut down even if the main thread has terminated. Now we will point this out at various stages as the section progresses. Here's another way to start a thread by implementing a Java interface. Here's an example of a simple runnable class which implements an interface called runnable. The class implements the method run. One important point about this interface, it can be simply treated as a block of code. Specifically, the method run does not take any parameters as input and does not return any output. Also, it cannot throw a checked exception, although it can throw an unchecked exception at any point. The way to start a new thread using a runnable is shown. Simply create a new thread class, pass the simple runnable object as a parameter to the constructor, and then call the start method. This approach is useful if you already have a class extending from another class and you need to make it runnable. Simply implement the runnable class because as we already know, multiple inheritance is not allowed in Java. Here is yet another way to use the runnable class to start a thread. Use the newly added static method called off platform to create a thread object and then call start on it. This is a shorter syntax and follows the convention of a fluent API. The method off platform is available from JDK 21 onwards. The example shows how you can set the name and whether it is a daemon thread in a single line. But that's not all. You can use Lambda functions as well to start a thread. For example, we see on the screen a Lambda function being passed instead of an interface. Now this works because the runnable interface only has a single method and therefore it is a functional interface. By the way, it is also explicitly marked as a functional interface as you will later see. From Java 8 onwards, a Lambda function can be used as an instance of the functional interface as long as the method signatures match. That's exactly what we are doing here. And the end result is 
the block of code that is passed is run on a different thread. We can also use method references. In the example shown, thread play class has a public static method called do something, which does not take any inputs or return any output. No checked exceptions are thrown either, which means it can be treated like a runnable. Such a method can be passed as an instance of the runnable functional interface. And the last example is again an example of a method reference being passed where runnable is required. So these were some of the simplest ways to create a new Java thread. Now let's take a look at some of the important methods that are generally used in our applications. If you want to get a handle to the current thread object, you can use the method current thread. It's a static method in the thread class. Once you get the current thread object, you can do what you have to do with the thread. In this example, we are just simply printing the name of the thread. The next example shows some methods to interrupt another running thread. Interrupts are the preferred mechanism to stop a thread gracefully. Calling an interrupt method on the thread will simply set the interrupt status flag for that thread. The thread in question should check this interrupt flag periodically using the isInterrupted method. Note also that the method isInterrupted does not reset the flag back to false. Now we will talk about thread interruption in great detail in the section on structured concurrency. The point I want to make is that stopping a thread is not automatically taken care of by the JVM. The developer has to code it correctly to look at the interrupt flag. It's a joint cooperation between the class and the JVM, or rather the developer and the JVM. The next example shows the join method. Once you start a thread from the current thread, you may want to join with the new thread again at a later point in time. Join makes the current thread wait till the new thread terminates. So in the example, the thread.join will wait till the thread has completed and fully terminated. In most cases, you would actually be doing other operations before you join back on the started thread basically giving you some asynchronous behavior. The next example shows how a thread can go to sleep for a particular duration and then resume its activity. This is usually done during polling where a thread needs to wait for some arbitrary amount of time and then do some operation periodically. In the example, you see the thread sleeping for about five seconds. And then the very last example, you see the thread being marked as a daemon thread. And when do you do this? For example, you would not mark a user request thread in an application server as a daemon thread, but you may mark a thread which periodically does some operations in the background to be a daemon thread, precisely because it's running in the background. As mentioned before, if there are only daemon threads running, the JVM will decide to shut itself down. Now with all these many ways of starting threads, unfortunately, the recommended approach is none of the above. Specifically, if you're using any of the application servers like Tomcat and WebLogic, creating your own platform threads in this way is highly discouraged. Let's find out why in the next lecture and also talk about better ways to create them.